So in our last podcast, we looked at running analysis from one way or another. In this podcast, we're going to be looking at running through an output and what the output actually means. So to begin with, at the top of the page, you go between subjects factors. This just shows what groups were allocated, um, sorry, which groups were, were analysed during the analysis. So in this one, we've got the caffeine, the water and the beer group with 10 participants in each. The next box is a descriptive statistics, which shows us the means and the standard deviations for each group. So caffeine was 82, water was 65, and beer was 56. And those values obviously represent the distance thrown by each group. The next box you're going to come to deals with homogeneity of variance. And this one particular example is Levine's tests for the quality of error variances. And if you don't quite understand what homogeneity of variance is, click back to the main page and there's a link on there for a quick explanation of what exactly homogeneity of variance is. What we really need to know in this box, we're looking for a significant to be a non a p value, sorry, to be non significant. So above 0 0.05. And in this case it's 0 0.659, meaning it's not significant, meaning homogeneity of variance has been satisfied, which means we can carry on. The next box we're looking at is our ANOVA, so the differences between each group. So there's a few things I want to draw your attention to in this box. First of all is the degrees of freedom. So for this one, the allocation, so that's three groups, so it's the number of groups total, minus one. And our error, which is the total number of participants minus the number of groups that we have. So in this case, it's 30 participants minus three groups, so 27. Next is the mean square, which is the values we used earlier to calculate our, our critical F, which is the allocation or the between group variance divided by the within group variance. That then gives us our calculated F, which in this case is 13.934 which we could then by hand compare to our critical F by going to the critical F table, looking up our degrees of freedom and finding the critical F there. And we're looking for this F value to be higher than our critical F. What SPSS does for us is creates a P value. And again, we're looking for this to be above 0 0.05. In this case, sorry, below 0 0.05. As you can see here, we do have a significant difference between the groups because this value is lower than 0 0.05. However, running an anode like this only shows us that there is a significant difference between the groups. It doesn't show us where this difference lies. For that, we need to follow on with a post hoc analysis. So the post hoc analysis boxes we ticked earlier on then breaks it down to compare each group to the other. In this particular one, we've done two keys and Bonfroni test. Two keys is a little bit more of a conservative test, uh, sorry, a liberal test compared to Bonfroni, which is a little bit more conservative. And as you can see here that I've highlighted, caffeine compared to water, there was a significant difference between these groups, and caffeine compared to beer, there's a significant difference between these two groups. However, there is no significant difference between water and beer in terms of throwing distance. In the Bonfroni one, the same results can be found because it's a little bit more conservative, the p-value was even higher for the water and beer groups. Finally, it gives us these hom homogeneous subsets, which just break down into a simple table showing which groups were significantly different from each other. So labeled here in green, beer and water were not significantly different from each other, compared to the caffeine group, which was significantly different to both water and beer. What's useful about this box is it also gives us the means so we can give the significance direction. So we can now say that the caffeine group threw significantly further than the water group and they also threw significantly further than the beer drinking group. That about wraps it up for SPSS. The next podcast is going to be looking at how we write that data down and exactly what we can conclude 
from this output.